things, my uh, scope of understanding in regards to the technology that is out there is growing daily. It seems like I'm being forced or thrust into this uh, social media movement, uh, mainly against my own will. Uh, but I think it's a good thing. I think uh, there's much that we can learn and we can utilize these sorts of modes uh, to benefit one another, especially when we can't physically be with one another. And so I just wanted to welcome everybody that is tuning into our new webpage or our new YouTube channel, sorry, uh, Grunthal EMB. It's a work in progress, so bear with us as we adapt, as we uh, seek to better it and to hear back from you. Maybe you can encourage us with different ideas different thoughts of things that we can place on here or that we can use uh, in the service on how we can connect. Uh, on that note, I encourage you that if there are things that are happening in your own life, uh, things that you'd like the church to pray for, or just ways in your own life where, where the Lord has really blessed you or has really taught you something, or your prayers he's answered, uh, share those things with us. Send us a little video of your own. Um, send us an email, send us an audio recording, uh, have your kids do something. There, there's many different ways that we can connect and we should connect, that we can encourage one another, even though we are apart from one another. And on that note, I just wanted to encourage you right now from a few of the words that we read in the scriptures from Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 to 5. This psalm is written by David, and he says in verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and heard my cry. You know, how patient are we when it comes to waiting? Uh, that's a difficult thing, especially when we're patiently waiting on the unseen or the seemingly unknown. Our circumstances are as such uh, that we are dependent on the unseen or the unknown, that we desire to know what we don't know, uh, to see things work out a certain way, and yet we are confined to our own situation, our own circumstances, where we're at in that moment, and so we must wait patiently. And so we do need to learn to wait patiently. And David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And as a result of that patient waiting, David says, he heard me. He inclined himself towards me. He heard my cry. And we serve a God that is not absent. We serve a God that doesn't mute us out. Uh, we serve a God that eagerly awaits to hear from us and in his perfect will and perfect timing inclines himself towards us uh, for our good, for our betterment, that we would be blessed, that we would be grow, that we would grow, that we would be strengthened. And so David says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. And, you know, David knew very well what it was to live a distraught uh, life, to live apart from those whom he loved, those whom he desired to be with. As he fled many times from Saul, as Saul chased him, as he struggled as the leader of Israel, the nation. He struggled with his own humanity and he struggled with what God wanted from him. He struggled with the lusts of the flesh and subduing that in utter submission to God. He struggled with all these things. And here in this Psalm, David says, he picked me up out of the miry clay, out of the pit of destruction. You know, and without God, that is where all our lives are. And that's where our lives are headed. And we so we desperately need to rely on God. For it is only He who can lift us up out of those places and put our feet on the firm ground. David goes on to say, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud nor to those who lapse into falsehood. You know, there's so many temptations around us to follow different, uh, different thoughts or different ideologies, different so-called tracks of wisdom, 
Uh, everybody has something that they want to share with you. Everybody has something or some opinion in regards to who you should be or where you should go or how you should deal with certain things. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, we have the Word of God, and the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light to our path. It is that which we are to depend on, that we are desired to follow. And David says, blessed is the man whose trust is the Lord. Not that we are just reading God's Word and then doing our own thing, or reading God's Word and then interpreting it our own way, but that we are indeed trusting in the Lord and trusting what His Word says and allowing that Word to help us to navigate our life, to guide us, to be that which will lead us to victory, that will indeed sanctify us. And David says, blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust. And in contrast, those that have not turned to the proud or to our own pride, or those who have not lapsed into falsehood, into that which is not of the Lord. We read in John 14, verse 6, Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the only way. He is the only truth. And he is the only source of life. Verse 5 of Psalm 4, he says, Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonders which you have done, and your thoughts toward us. There is none to compare with you. If I would declare and speak of them, they would be too numerous to count. Oh, in life, there are so many things we take for granted. And, you know, I was reminded just the other day that one of the things, the greatest things I think I've taken for granted my entire life seeing as how I've grown up within the church as my dad is a minister as well. and uh, Church and the Christian lifestyle has been very much uh, a part of my life from day one. But I also know that I've taken it for granted from day one because I've never been faced with something even as minuscule as what we're dealing with right now where, where church has to adapt or change. Not because of persecution, not because there's any tyrannical force that's out there that's trying to stop the church, although there are, uh, but because of something such as this sickness, this ailment that is moving through a country which is shutting down not just the church, but all businesses and all normalities of life. Uh, we're living in a very different time. And in light of that, it's caused me to reflect on that which I've taken for granted, uh, the fellowshipping together with other believers, the coming together on Sundays, the Bible studies, the small groups. Uh, we truly need to cherish those times and recognize them, every single one of them, as a blessing from God that we have the freedom to do that. And there are many other things in life that we do take for granted, that we don't recognize, that we don't take that time out to give thanks to God that he has allowed that to happen in our life and that he has graced us as a participant within that which he has allowed to happen. And David says, if I were to count the blessings of God or speak the blessings of God, they'd be too numerous. This would be an unending video <laughs> if we would declare the greatness and the goodness of God in just my own life, let alone in the lives of others, let alone in the world around us. So what a great thought to challenge each other with, to be encouraged by that we serve a God that we can trust, a God that is great, a God that is able, a God that listens, a God that, God that picks us up out of the muck, gives us hope, gives us a future, and has blessed us beyond what we ever will know. Thanks for tuning in and listening, and we hope to uh, do more of this, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday.